Hi everyone, welcome back to the podcast. To have Arun with me, and we have some more questions that need some answering. So, without wasting much further time, we we'll jump into the questions which Arun has. So, what are your questions today, Arun? I think you want to talk about what I did yesterday. Yeah. Tata Motors first. So, the question is, um, what will happen to the Tata Motors DVR share after the demerger of Tata Motors company? Yeah. Okay. I spoke about this in greater detail in yesterday's video. So, if you haven't seen it, see that. Mm. So you understand. But in brief, mm. what basically it means is Tata, first you must understand mm. Tata Motors DVR and Tata Motors share are both shares. Mm. They're two types of shares, okay. but they're shares of the Tata Motors mm. company. The main difference between this and that is, is the voting rights. Mm. Otherwise, everything else is the same. Mm. Okay. It has all other features of the Tata share is there in the DVR share. Now, this has been agreed to be converted the DVR shares into Tata Motor shares. That ratio everybody knows. Mm. Post that, they are planning to, this is just an idea they have thought of and now they have to get approvals and it's a long drawn out process. They want to unlock value for shareholders and Tata Motors themselves by splitting the commercial and the passenger vehicle mm. division. Mm. Under passenger vehicle division, you have Tata Motors making cars. Then you have Jaguar mm. and you also have GLR. So that is there. Mm. So they're going to remove that and keep that as a separate company. And the trucks which mm -hmm. they make, the buses, that's going to be commercial vehicles. That will be a separate company. Mm. They feel, especially in recently, the Tata Motors, Jaguar and Land Rover has been contributing quite a bit to the profit margin of Tata Motors. Mm -hmm. So by separating it, they are unlocking value mm -hmm. to the shareholder and they feel it will be better run and offer more returns to investors by separating both the companies. Okay. Now the question is asked by everybody is they are confused. So what does that mean to my shares? Mm -hmm. When the demerger happens, if and when it happens, each person shareholder of a Tata Motors share will get one of each. Mm. How Reliance is split? Yeah. Oh. Ambani split Reliance, no? The Mukesh and Anil. So you'll get one share of the newly formed passenger company mm. and the newly formed commercial, commercial vehicle, you'll get one, one share of each. So by this time, your Tata Motors DVR shares have already been converted to Tata, Tata Motors. Motors share. So you'll only have Tata Motors shares at that point of time. Mm. After that, they're splitting the company into two. Mm. It's just... That's all there is. There's nothing complicated. Mm. If you see the yesterday's video, you'll understand in greater length what I've spoken, in depth why they're doing this and how it will benefit everybody, including mm. them. Okay. Okay. But nothing to worry about. And this is only after the DVR is done. And this will take 15 to 18 months for this to mm. happen. After all approvals come and things happen. So don't worry about it. There's nothing the investor has to do for this. Mm. This will automatically happen. Tata Motor shares will exit your DMAT account. And new company shares will be credited to your account. You really don't have to do anything. This will happen automatically. Okay. As okay. a shareholder, we shouldn't worry much about this. You don't have to worry okay. about it. Okay. You don't have to do any paperwork. You don't mm. have to fill out any forms. Mm. Yes, nothing you have to do. You'll get it. Okay. So the next question is, can you make a video on government involving stock which we should not buy? Well, the general rule of thumb, which we keep saying is not to buy any government companies. Mm. The reason why we are insistent on not buying any government companies, even if the government is making heavy capital investment, let's say for railways, mm. they're promising to invest. I would rather invest in private enterprises which are supplying things to the railways or doing things with the government. Okay. And look at those companies, if that is a desire for you to do. Mm. I mean, that's the main reason people are asking. They're saying, you know, there's going to be huge expansion, let's mm. say, in railways. Then should we be looking at railway companies? The reason why I say don't do that is because governments do not run companies for profit. Mm. Governments run companies for policies. So if they need to change a certain company, let's say, way a company is doing business, even if it needs to do it at a loss, they'll do it at a loss if it matches their mm. policy needs. Mm. And the government doesn't care for the simple reason government can print money whenever it wants. Okay. So you'll never see fabulous returns as an investor from government companies. Mm. Okay. You, you might see mediocre returns, you'll keep sustaining it. It will not be a great loss, not a great profit, it will be running. Mm. And it will be very poorly and inefficiently run. If you see the amount of 
money it is spending on things you'll be wondering why is it spending so much money on salaries why mm-hmm. is it so many people working in it it's because the government has to do that okay because it has policy requirements it needs to answer it has elections coming up every 5 years so based on that it reacts not based on what are the market conditions mm. what are investor sentiments so if the government decides what to do it will do but it will not do based on the market sentiments alone market sentiments uh, investors and all that it doesn't take into consideration okay. at all so as an investor what are you going to do and it might look attractive when you just see the pe mm. and you might even argue saying debt we don't need to worry about because it's owned by the government the mm. government can put money whenever yeah. it wants but if you put all that aside and look at returns the much better companies offer you better returns in other day you are investing for returns mm. that in 5 years time in 10 years mm. time that will grow there are much better opportunities right now in the market compared to others and one more thing is they take the lump sum of the amount as dividends and do not reinvest the back to the company yeah so they, that they pull out, a lot yes they don't leave any capital anything on the table they'll pull it out mm, okay what's the next question so this is about gold what is the best way to acquire gold gold bees or sgb or mcx or physical gold well we have spoken about this uh, many many times and uh, i don't uh, mind answering this every time when it's asked for a simple reason there are new viewers who are coming mm. and sometimes old viewers forget so they find it easy to ask this mm. instead of going looking for the video and mm. watching it me and anand have spoken about it anand has spoken about it separately me and shashwat have spoken about it i have spoken about it separately so there are many videos about this see gold is not an investment gold is a storehouse of value so if you are thinking about buying gold that in 5 years time 10 years time is going to give me returns there are much better places to put your money okay okay gold has low risk okay returns are poor in terms of investment and it beats inflation all the time mm. that means let's say inflation goes to 12% gold will give 13% mm. the inflation goes to 15% gold will go to 16% mm. Mm. so it tracks and always keeps beating inflation that's why if anyone has liquid cash sitting in their account instead of keeping it as liquid cash or an fd mm. if you don't want to put it in the stock market and you're feeling nervous you can buy gold etf mm. the reason why i'm saying buy gold etf instead of physical gold is etf is very liquid mm. you can easily sell it okay and you can buy it the problem is if you buy physical gold if you already don't have a bank locker you have to go and rent a bank locker mm. and keep it in the bank mm. and if you want to take the gold out and you need the money urgently you have to be physically in that city mm. let's say i bought it in asan tutukudi mm. and i put it in a locker there mm. then i got promotion everything came to chennai then from chennai i've gone to bangalore okay. now i urgently need the money uh, that will be in what place happen uh. i'll have to go all the way catch a train or a mm-hmm. bus or drive to tutukudi and hope the bank locker is open <laughs> open the locker take out the mm-hmm. gold mm-hmm. even if i'm not taking a loan then go and sell it mm-hmm. to a jeweler see all that logistics is a pain mm-hmm. we need the money urgently okay. it works as long as we're looking at it as an i'm going to just buy the gold and keep it forever okay then you can do that but here we're talking about keeping it liquid so if you buy it on an etf wherever in india wherever you are in the mm-hmm. world okay. you're going to us and you're working there and your mother is in mm-hmm. india you just quickly need to give her some money so easy liquidation is there in gold etf yeah you just sell the etf money will credit your account and you can transfer to your mother and say here done okay okay that flexibility etf has and another great thing etf has over physical gold is we are all human beings we all get sentimental so you'll work very hard and you know buy the first gram mm-hmm. of gold even if you don't buy jewelry you buy one gram of gold and then what happens is you start emotionally getting attached to it mm, that is my first month salary yes. product yes I, i bought it my father gave me one gold okay. you know i saved gold. this much money yes and then you will never be able to sell it okay. so what will you do you'll go pledge it and take a loan against it mm. and you'll be paying interest for it mm. which is stupid right okay. so it's better if you have it as an etf you have no sentimental value about etf mm. it's not any physical gold you're holding it's only electronic gold on the demat account mm. you'll sell it do whatever you need to do and slowly start buying gold again mm. so if you do the math and see you'll actually save money Mm. So that is the main reason I'll say buy ETF. The only reason you should hold on to physical gold is you don't plan to sell it. You don't plan to pledge it. Okay. You just want to keep it as a security in case something very bad happens. Mm. Okay. Right? So that you hold as physical gold. But this should answer depending on where you are mentally and how much gold you already have and amount of money you have, you can see buying ETF or physical gold. Mm. The advantage another advantage of ETF is you can buy in micrograms. Mm. You know, you can even buy ten rupees. So, if in gold, we should buy one gram, two gram like that. But in ETF, you can even buy. Yes, you can have only twelve rupees. You can buy for twelve rupees of okay. gold. You have five rupees. You can buy, mm. and you know, accumulate later. Mm. 
in google app it's there in amazon everyone is now selling gold like that so you can buy you know keep accumulating 5 6 grams mm-hmm. of gold and that will grow into so much money yeah. then you can immediately liquidate it and if you want to go buy physical gold buy physical gold okay but whatever you have do not keep it in the savings account other than the bare minimum mm-hmm. you know expenses for 3 months you keep that should be fine mm-hmm. some people keep it for 6 months but depends on your liquidity and your frame of mind and your job security if you have good job security then you can keep 6 months worth of in you know, a monthly money in your account and the rest you should invest mm-hmm. or keep it in gold then what is mcx yes ask the bit it's all only the same man uh-huh. okay gold bs gold etf okay, M- okay. it's all traded gold mm, okay. right in the stock market mm. so it doesn't matter which one you take okay okay the other one is gold bond mm. that i do not recommend a lot of people are very fascinated by it because it's giving interest and all mm. that but if you really look work out the cost which you see one of the older videos i did with uh, i think alvin we actually work on numbers and show how that interest you are actually paying that interest up front mm. because there is a premium you are paying for that bonds so actually you are paying more than what the gold is mm. so the interest you are getting back is actually your money they are returning to you if you do the numbers and see okay. i am sure a lot of people who support the gold bonds will be immediately very angry with me and they but i don't really analyze gold too much because gold is not an investment mm. it stores of value yeah okay. and it's only there as a emergency you keep some gold it's enough you can't buy kilos and kilos of gold and think it's going to give you better returns and we did a video in the beginning of the year where we spoke about returns last year mm. nifty compared to gold and money page video yeah, money page had we did and in beerage okay. we did where gold has uh, not done as good as nifty nifty mm. did better nifty mm. gave some 24% gold only gave some 18% mm. The funny thing is, everybody asks this question. If everybody had bought gold, four hundred grams, and Anand told you mm. that value is doubled, mm. that's two years back, three years back, when Anand has been telling mm. you, they had bought it, it's doubled. Four hundred grams of gold, what you would have spent money two mm. years, three years back. Now you only get two hundred grams. Mm. So it's better to do something than to keep planning and doing nothing. Okay. Most of our viewers want to talk. Very few actually want to do. Mm. When it comes to going and buying new phone. they don't come and ask 100 questions mm-hmm. to buy a new camera lens no only for investment this money only for investment us. somehow there's always many questions and you know wait to it wait they think the money is yes lost, yes right? even tiffin coffee mm-hmm. even if they wait in a meal right now and they see one biscuit they like they'll buy it and eat it mm-hmm. there's no th- thought second thought mm-hmm. they'll eat a meal they see one coca cola they feel like drinking they'll drink it you know that's the same amount of money i'm asking you to invest even if you bought to buy gold buy 10 rupees every day buy 10 12 rupees of gold mm-hmm. but i don't know maybe there is something more which i can't understand the way the mind works mm. anyway chalo thanks for watching the podcast guys i hope we answered some of your questions do start investing if you have not started investing do buy insurance and keep some emergency funds in hand and do try and get rid of all your loans these things go time immemorial regardless of market cycles and world macro economic conditions or whatever is happening in the world being debt free having insurance and having some gold in your hand will go you serving you a long way even if you don't want to put into mutual funds that you think stock market is a scam at least doing these three things will go a long way into helping you create some wealth thank you thank you